This week, we're going to talk about some of the most uniquely packaged cigars called Culebras. The history is controversial. The packaging is very unique. They're a lot of fun to smoke, so there's a social component. So make sure you stay tuned to hear all about the Culebra on this edition of Stogie Geek Shorts. This is a Security Weekly production. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome everyone to Stogie Geek Shorts. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island. On the lines via Skype is Mr. Will Cooper. Welcome, Will. Greetings, Paul, and greetings to all of our friends out on Facebook Live who tuned in today. Yes, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we needed one more person on this show to talk about this cigar. Good for point. reasons that we get into, right? We should have had or maybe two more people here in studio and two more people in Will's studio. Uh, we needed some smoking buddies for this one. We failed on that. Um, but we're going to talk about the Culebra. It's a very interesting uh, way in which to package a cigar. Uh, there's a lot of history. There's a lot of controversy about the history. Uh, it does not fit very nicely in the ashtray, I find. I don't know if you can see the one that I'm smoking. It's, it's very curvy and wavy. Uh, basically, they take three Panatella-sized cigars. They underfill them. They twist the physical cigars together and tie them together with string and call it a Culebra. Now, I have one here, Will. Yeah, there's one right there. I, um, for this segment, I have uh, the Tatawahe Old Man and the Sea, which I forget the whole story behind the whole Old Man and the Sea. Uh, Hemingway. Yeah, okay. Thank you. It's, Heming- it's Hemingway, yeah. It's so this, this comes with a, a Lancero in each one, and the original release has, which I have right here, has the El Triumphador uh, right. in it. Oops, there goes some Calibras all over my laptop. Uh, so that, that is this box. And then the newer oh. one has the black label cigar in it, which we'll, we should take pictures of those. Now, this one's very interesting, the one with the black label, because the Culebra comes wrapped in this foil, and, I mean, <clears throat> whoever taped it is, is, like, must be really good at wrapping Christmas gifts. <laughs> well, that's that, that's that Pete Johnson wet packing. I think he's applying to that. Yes. So this is, this is wet pack. You can see there's, like, a gigantic piece of tape that's attached uh, to it. Let me, while you're opening it, let me just yeah. say, that is a really smart move because I happen to have, I'm just, we, folks, know I'm smoking the Caldwell Calabra. Is it Calabra or Calabra? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> tomato, tomato, in my opinion. Okay. So... With this, with this cigar, it's very unique in that they come seven units, a unit being three of the parts per box. So they actually are sold in boxes. Now, when you, t- when you buy these in singles and t- put them in your little cigar bag to take home, they are, they are very fragile. So a lot of times you'll see these cigars, the Calibras, packed in coffins or, as in Paul's case, coffin and foil, which I think is a really smart move because they are delicate. And they are tied together very tightly. We'll put some pictures up uh, yeah. in, in the recorded version uh, of it. And they're tied together very tightly for a reason. I mean, you can, when you're smoking it, the indentation from the string is usually still there. And that's what helps it hold its shape. I mean, these things are like, they're like kind of, I, I've, I've never seen one rolled. And it's, you know, I, I hear you, I've seen a video of it rolled, but I'm really curious to see it li- uh, live rolled. Yeah. Um, because I think it would be very interesting. Now, there's a, there's a, Kind of a tale behind how this happened, like why they, why, why yeah. would you take three now, cigars and do this? It's funny. I twist the tale and I make it more like a hacking story. I and it's completely incorrect and fabricated. And so this is like Paul's story on Calibras. I stated it as the rollers in the factory were only allowed to take one cigar home. So what they did was they rolled three cigars together and called it one cigar and got three cigars out of it. And I make it like the rollers were kind of hacking the system. So I use that in my security podcast and security presentations because it relates to security. However, that is absolutely fabricated. (laughs) That part's fabricated. That part is fabricated. However, they did intend 
to address how many, well, the, the, the other piece of history, which is more factual, is that rollers were allowed to take a certain amount of cigars home. And I, I think from what I read, Will, it was so that they're more identifiable, so they can uh, take these home and it, they're wrapped in three. And so the cigars you take home are always wrapped in, in threes. And so that was a way to kind of monitor what the uh, cigar rollers were taking home. However, that's been somewhat debunked as well because the uh, story goes there's so many seconds and, and, and whatnot that rollers can take really as many home as they, they would have liked. I, I know that's the other piece there. Um, I, I do, do want to say, well, that the, the best article, the definitive source uh, for the Culebra, uh, Culebra, I think it's Culebra. Well, I see it spelled differently or I spelled it wrong. Uh, maybe or, we're say, or, or one of us is saying it or wrong. One of us is saying it wrong. Um, the Culebra, as it is in the Tobacconist University article from Christina Fontecchio, she is a certified master tobacconist. And I'm, I'm told, Will, uh, that today she's reached uh, in a level above that, like an additional certification think, above that. Yeah, I think it's either that or the master is that additional level of certification. Okay. Uh, she yeah. published an article on Tobacconist University on July 30th of 2014 and did a ton of research into the Culebra. So you make sure you go read that article. Um, we'll make sure we put a link to it in the show notes for this episode uh, and accompany this episode. And um, lots of great information here. Uh, she talked about the history, which we really just covered. Um, she also said some very interesting things. Uh, we talked about the ribbons that hold it together. They are, in fact, underfilled, so they're more pliable. Oh, the other part was when they were making it is Christina reported in the article that they have to add a lot more water. So they're rolled at a much higher moisture content than other cigars to get them to bend, which I didn't, I didn't know. I mean, it I did makes not sense, but I had oh. never seen that in, in print before. So, uh, Christina, I'm a fan, by the way. Your, your article is awesome. Um, and one of the other things that she said was that they typically, they'll put a cap on each one, but some rollers will place a large cap over all three for an elegant finish. I don't think I've ever seen one with I don't one big cap. That. Over all three, which, uh, which is very uh, interesting. The first appearance of it, to go back to the history uh, just a little bit, uh, dates back to like the 1800s. Um, in mid-19th century, the Philippines were some of the first to uh, have this. And there are uh, pictures and other references to an American company, uh, A.C. Brenkel Company's Twisted F Smoke was a four-cigar Cool Labor made in 1914, and the Cuban Twist was a three cigar made in Wisconsin in the 1920s. So this did exist. We interviewed Chris Topper. This did exist in the American uh, cigar uh, industry uh, in the 19th and 20th centuries, uh, early, uh, late uh, 19th century, early 20th century in cigar history. Um, so it's reasonable to conclude, Christina states, that the Culebra originated no later than 1885 and most likely between 1880 and 1885. So it's been around for a long time. Interesting. Um, what else about the Culebra? It does sit in the ashtray weird. It does smoke surprisingly well. One of the it, things here's I... Here's the thing. Here, there's two, so there's two types of Culebras you can have, though. Mm -hmm. So there, most of the Culebras you will see, and like the ones that Paul and I are smoking, are three of these twisted Panatellas of the same blend. Mm. Now, there have been cases where... There has been three different blends twisted together. So each Panatella is a, a, a different blend. We saw that with Viva Republica and v Regis Cigars has, has done that as well. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, again, find both very interesting because one is, hey, all three of us can smoke one of these Calabras and we can yeah, talk about that's it. That's a great it's, social aspect of it, which is why right. I like the uh, Calabras is you break them out. And it's an interesting conversation piece when mm -hmm. you sit down to smoke with your friends. Because everyone always asks, well, where did that come from? How does that work? What is it that's so weird? So it's a great conversation piece. And they're fun to smoke with friends because you get three cigars in one package, essentially. Um, and everyone can smoke one. And they smoke They smoke really well, I've found. Because they're underfilled, uh, I've always found the draw to be very easy on them, which is weird because they're shaped weird. Uh, and again, trying to rest it in the ashtray is, is like a balancing act in and of itself. Now, Paul 
Yeah. Now, Paul, I know you reviewed the one I'm smoking, the the mm. Caldwell. Yeah. And I think you gave it a fiver. Mm. And I, and I would say, I would say this is about a fiver. Now, I'm not. This is not. There's there are better sizes in this blend. There's no question about yeah, it. Yeah. I don't think I've smoked the other sizes to my knowledge. Somebody, else, but. But this is very good. This is a very good cigar. I mean, this is a fiver again. Is nothing to, to uh, yeah. slouch no, about. Yeah, no, it was good. No, I liked it. Yeah, um, it, they're ugly. You know, when you pull these things together, they they look beautiful when they're twisted together. But when you pull them apart, they're, they're ugly. ugly. I mean, yeah. yeah, they're ugly. There's nothing. It's to, ugly. Yeah, and and I uh, would I would recommend like I, I smoked one of the Culebras, uh, and you can see the other two that I'm holding up here, uh, how oddly shaped they are. Um, they don't really go back together that well. I guess you could tie the two of them back together. And this might... is very loose, so I have mine. But yeah, yeah they, they're. But once you take off one of the ribbons, it, it's it's loose. It's just a cautionary thing that when you put these back in your humidor, they're not going to lay in a tray, or you may want to put them back in the box, or just be careful when you store them because they're just so oddly shaped. There's a, a higher chance, I think, of them becoming damaged uh, once they come apart. So. Yeah, and that's why I think the coffins are – even if yeah. you have some coffins lying around, you got to just make sure they're wide enough. But mm -hmm. um, you can put them – You lay, uh, what I find is lay them in the coffin if it's wide enough. and uh, Or you could just – especially after you take one out, once they're in the coffin, you leave the lid open. And, you know, they'll be protected that way. Yeah, and there's a – this article is from uh, – Christina's article from 2014 lists some uh, current regular production and or limited production Culebras. Uh, there's one from Brun Del Rey. Davidoff, yep. Drew Estate, Illusion, Johnny O, which I had never heard Johnny of. Johnny O is a kind of a Tatawahe. Uh, I gotcha. Been off. Uh, La Flor Dominicana, Partagas, and of course, we're, we're, I'm smoking the Tatawahe, and Will is smoking one of the newer releases uh, Caldwell. from Caldwell. Yeah, a couple of notes on those. Uh, so the Illusion was the 23. That has been discontinued. Okay. Uh, so my, if you're if you're looking to get kind of a an Easter egg kind of a cigar, a unicorn. Mm -hmm. If anyone knows of them around, let me know as well. Yeah, I don't I've think I've ever seen one. Yep. Um, uh, they're hard to find. They're hard because these are and the Drew Estate, the Medusa, is an infused one, from what I understand. Oh, interesting. Uh, yep. Also, Oliva V has a. How can we forget that? I have that Culebra. one. Yeah. I have. It came in a special, like limited edition. I got mine. I mean, it's good to <laughs> test my memory. I got mine in a box with, I want to say there was five, <coughs> excuse me, five uh, Kane F Lanceros and five Kane F Daytona Lanceros. Yep. That and both of those right. were in tubos on either side. And in the middle, there was a channel and there was a Culebra which I'm told was from the Oliva V series blend. It's from, it's from the V series blend. And I, I remember I got that. And then I happened when I was in Nicaragua, Gilberto Oliva gifted uh, a bunch of us another one of those. And I have that other one sitting in my humidor. Yeah. Now um, I have not it, smoked it, the Culebra from that set. And I've, that set's got to be, be five it, or six it, years it may, old. It may be the best one I've had. Really? Um, yeah. It's really that good. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so yeah. this is fun. I strongly encourage uh, everyone to smoke Culebras, uh, especially with friends. Yeah, you know, I was just so interested. I was just looking at the article at a glance. There's a they have a ch that Johnny O has a Churchill eight by forty seven Culebra. Wow. Now that's and a nine by forty nine and a half an A size a nine and a half by forty seven. Now that got me thinking. Hamlet from Rocky Patel, mm -hmm. he's rolled these giant Culebras, right? Which he they're, I want to say they're about 36 inches long. Wow. Um, they're, I think they're more meant for show than for smoking. Yeah. But um, if you go, if you see Hamlin at these Rocky Patel events, he'll be, he, he rolls them. And when I said I, I didn't see someone roll a Calabria, I, I forgot about that. But again, that's kind of a special, more artistic type of thing. It's a little different than I think rolling a, a classic Calabria. Yeah. And, and one note about these Tatawahe Old Man in the Sea, the Lancero that you get in both of these. In mm -hmm. both these blends is freaking awesome, by the way. Oh, let me oh, tell you. That, it's that's so the, good. You, you have the El Triumphador Lancero and the Black Label Lancero, which are two of Pete's, I think, best Lanceros he's come out with. Yeah, I mean, the cellophane on this Triumphador is like, I, I don't know, you can't see it on camera, but the cellophane is really yellow. And that's a unique concept what Pete did with that because, yeah, it's a takeoff of Hemingway, right? But you have the Lancero version of that, and then you kind of have that Twisted Calabra. So it kind of gives you a chance to compare and contrast it a bit. 
Yeah, I like it. I mean, it could almost, it's like a variation of the dueling cigars that we uh, talked about last week. Yep. It, well, exactly. It's a three, uh, a three way. <laughs> <laughs> a threesome. <laughs> yes. And on that note, <laughs> That concludes <laughs> Stogie Geek Shorts for today. Thanks, everyone, for listening and watching. Check out the Stogie Geek Show every Monday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, broadcast live on YouTube and Facebook at stogiegeeks.com forward slash live. As always, cigar-coop.com for all the latest cigar news and reviews. Thanks, everyone, for listening and watching.